All right, I'm getting these T-nuts ready to be embedded into the fiberglass, but we have to protect those threads. We don't want any fiberglass getting into the threading so that these bolts will go in properly. So I'm going to put a bolt inside of there with honey wax mold release agent on them. First, I put the bolt in far enough so it sticks out just beyond the end, and then I'm going to wrap the head with masking tape so that I don't get or need to get honey wax all the way up the bolt. And I'll also mark how far down I need honey wax. So I'm just putting honey wax near the bottom where it goes through the threads and just above that. We're going to try to keep the honey wax off of the T-nuts as much as possible because we want those to have a good connection to the fiberglass. Although really we're going to be embedding them between at least two layers. So they're going to be stuck through a layer and then a layer will be stuck on top of them. All right, I have the first foot, maybe foot and a half of the top fiberglass. It's wet. You can see here, maybe, there's my mark. And here's the next mark. And we're going to be putting in the... Uh, nuts, stainless steel nuts, that will be used here to hold things on top. So what I've found works well is to hold the nut on the mark, just pound that sucker in. Now it's going to bounce around a lot, the fiberglass will move, you definitely want it to stay even. So these are things you have to come back and check on as the fiberglass starts to dry. The height isn't particularly important for my application. I'm driving the head a little bit under the level of the fiberglass there. So when it gets done, that's basically what it looks like there. I'm going to do these other three here and then continue fiberglassing the rest going along. All right, I have all 16 bolts or nuts with a bolt in them to hold them in place. And I fiberglassed the entire top and rear of the pontoon. So the only thing I have left to do now is I have a tiny little bit of extra epoxy I'm going to put on top of these nuts. On top of each nut, I'm going to put a little piece of epoxy tape on top of it just to give it an extra layer right now bonded to the layer below it. All right, I've cut out 16 pieces with a bolt hole in the center. To do that, you fold it in half, fold it in half, cut the torner off, and that's how you get a nice bolt hole in the center. And this is the point where it gets a little bit messy, in that we are going to get these extremely epoxy stick them down by hand on top of this guy. Now your epoxy is going to start getting hot so you want to work on it pretty quick and you definitely want to be using a slow uh, slow hardener for this type of a procedure. because you're leaving a decent amount in the pot. If that becomes an issue, you can pour the epoxy onto a paper plate and that will let it get more surface area and less heat for your fingers. And I'm going to come back with a brush and kind of dab all these excess fibers in with the brush after I uh, put them all down but I'm just trying to get them all down right now. All right, I've epoxied and fiberglass the entire top, including the nuts for these bolts, and one section on the rear here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I have a little bit of fiberglass tape, woven fiberglass tape, little square on top of the nuts 
So I'm also going to be putting a couple layers of chop strand mat on top of those nuts in a separate setting. But I wanted to bond that cloth tape on top of the nuts to the chop strand mat underneath the nuts in a single go here. All right, it's been 24 hours, so the epoxy has cured plenty enough to uh, remove these guys and then sand the top down. Because we have these bolts going through here, um, you're going to see there's some epoxy in kind of a little thing that sticks up right there. Um, so we're going to sand all that down and then put a few more layers of chop strand mat on top for strength. First, we have to remove all these guys. You could wear these protrusions down with a uh, sander, but I've found that an oscillating cutoff tool makes short work of them and produces less dust. After the surface is sanded and then vacuumed, we can start putting these guys back in place to get ready for another few layers of chop strand mat on top of them. You may find in some cases you actually get threads into the fiberglass in addition to the stainless steel T-nut underneath. And as long as those threads are going to line up correctly, that's just fine. Alright, I cut another layer of chopped strand mat. I have large pieces on the two front and the two back, and then just squares in the center bolts. And I'm also, the second layer will be a smaller piece that goes on top of that thing as well and poking holes in these guys as we speak. So essentially those are to hold the nuts in place and then this bit here is to kind of tie those nuts and bolts to the rest of the body. So as I go through to get a hole for these guys, I basically just stick a pair of scissors down there and pull it up the scissors and then after I put the first layer down I can pop this down on top and wet it down as well. 